Welcome to the wonderful world of calculus. I'm so glad you came. Today's topic is antiderivatives. And uh, we've got two objectives written right here. First objective, you will be able to find antiderivatives that follow directly from derivatives of basic functions. Nothing crazy here. Stick with the basic functions. And number two, find specific antiderivatives using initial conditions. Keywords here, specific and initial conditions. Um, antiderivatives, a lot like they sound, the opposite, inverse operation of a derivative. We're going backwards. This is backwards thinking. Think addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, driving forward, driving in reverse. And just like one of those things is always a little awkward, so with antiderivatives. Think when you drive reverse, you've got to turn the steering wheel maybe in the opposite way as you're looking backwards. That's a little harder to do. Same thing with subtraction, same thing with division, I think. Antiderivatives, same thing. So key here is we need to practice. Practice these up so we get proficient at taking them. Now, good thing is, these are always checkable by differentiating, taking derivatives. If we take the derivative of the antiderivative, we should get the original. This should make sense after we do some examples. But as a launch, I've got a warm up for us right here. The directions say, here are derivatives, give the function. So this is a list of six derivatives. I'm asking you to find the original function. Take some time to do that now. With these six, you may pause the video. Okay, hopefully you took time to do this. Let's go over this. The question to ask is, the derivative of what is 2x? First one, this goes with x squared, because the derivative of x squared is 2x. So the antiderivative of 2x, or I should say an antiderivative of 2x, is x squared. x, well that's linear. We need to differentiate some type of quadratic term with involving an x squared to end up with an x. But if I differentiate this, I get 2x, so something must cancel that 2x. So let's put a constant of 1 half up front. Then I can differentiate that, check it. That gives you that. x squared. In a similar way, um, the derivative of a cubic would give you a quadratic. But this 3 is coming down. I need something to cancel that 3. It would be a 1 third. Derivative of this is x squared. Antiderivative of x squared is 1 third x cubed. Let's continue. This one, you might think a 1 over x squared. You might think a rewrite there. And I agree x to the negative 2 and um, hopefully you came up with something that involves x to the negative 1 but if I take the derivative of that a negative 1 comes down I need to cancel that that'd be a negative 1 I'm sorry for my phone in the background. So now we can check this by differentiating. Negative 1 times negative 1, that'd be the positive 1, times x to the negative 2. Subtract 1 on the power to get that. Another form of this that you could have is negative 1 over x. That works. That was a little tricky. This one, I think rewrite 2. Um, I know it has to involve an x to the negative 2, but this negative 2 would come down as a coefficient, so I need something to cancel that. 
and a negative one half works pretty nicely there. So we can check that negative two comes down, cancels the negative one half to make one, times x to the negative three, which is what that is. Of course, an alternate form of this would be negative one over two x squared. So hopefully with these, you're already seeing some sort of pattern and that we're gonna, we're gonna um, come up with a power rule for antiderivatives. That's coming this lesson. The question to ask is, the derivative of what is cosine? Something with sine, let's see if that works. Derivative of sine is cosine, so that works. There's the antiderivative of cosine x. Derivative of sine x is cosine x. So you can see that these things check. This was the easy list. Now I'm going to give you some more challenging ones. So you can continue this backwards thinking. So same directions here. First one is 2x plus 1. Next one, x squared plus 3x. Next one, secant squared x. Square root x, 1 over cube root x, 2x sine x squared, Do another one. X times quantity 3x squared plus 5 to the fifth. And one more. Cosine x minus x sine x. Spin some more time. Pause your video now and try to figure these out. Don't don't go crazy here if you're not getting something initially. Let's move on with this. I'll, I'll give the answers momentarily. Okay, hopefully you've had time to look those over. This one we can do term by term. So there will be a sum rule. So start here. Um, the easy term, derivative of what is 1? That would be x. And derivative of what is 2x? x squared plus 1. This one, derivative of what is x squared? 1 third x cubed plus derivative of what gives you 3x? That's 3 halves x squared. Now I'm checking these because they're polynomial, pretty easy to check. So far, everything looks good. Here's your memory work. The derivative of what is secant squared x? Be tangent x. And this one, this one might be worthy of a rewrite here. This is x to the 1 half. So I know my answer will involve an x to the 3 halves. Now that 3 halves needs to be cancelled because there's no coefficient or just the coefficient of 1 right there. So that would be the reciprocal, 2 thirds, x to the 3 halves is our answer here. I also think a rewrite here, that's x to the negative 1 third. Hopefully you add an x to the 2 thirds, some version of that. And I need the reciprocal, it's kind of an important thing as we're finding out. 2 thirds times 3 halves, that gives you the 1. And then I uh, subtract 1 from 2 thirds, that's negative 1 third. We've got it. Now, these ones get a little tricky uh, because of chain rule. So this one looks complicated, but the answer is going to be surprisingly simple. Because of chain rule. And what I say is that this 2x gets sucked up in the chain rule because the derivative of x squared is 2x. 
So I, I'll take a guess here just at cosine x squared. So derivative, we check going this way. This is cosine u. The derivative of cosine u is negative sine u times u prime. I've got sine u, so it seems like I need a negative. Sine u times u prime. So I think this will work. Let me check once again. Derivative of cosine u is sine u times u prime. And then my two negatives, I'd get one here and one from the derivative would cancel. That works. Similar thing here. If we call u our inner function, 3x squared plus 9, the derivative of that is 6x. So I'd really like to have a 6x there, but I have uh, an x. Um, so I, I need a 1 sixth, the reciprocal would be important there. And I've got a u to the fifth, antiderivative there, probably involve u to the sixth. So let's try this out, see how it works. Something must cancel that six, it'd be a one sixth. Um, and then something must cancel out the six that comes from the derivative of u, because the derivative of the inside part is six x plus zero, six x. So I think I need another one sixth there. So let's try it out. Maybe one thirty sixth altogether. Six comes down, cancels with the one thirty sixth to make one sixth times u to the fifth. You got a u to the fifth times six x. Here's the x, and that six will cancel with the one sixth that's left here to, just to make one, which is our coefficient right there. So it works. Once again, if, if you're not understanding this totally, it's all right. This is day one. I'm trying to show you everything um, just to give you a heads up on what you'll learn. This last one, kind of a trick question. It looks complicated, but it's really because of the product rule. Here's the key here. It kind of sucks down. So I see like a a 1d2 plus 2d1 going on and it seems like one of the parts needs to be x and the other one needs to be cosine x. So let's try that. 1, no, oh, here's 1, d2 would be negative sine x plus 2 d1. So pretty tricky. Um, if you figure that one out, you're pretty clever. What I really want you to know for today would be anything above my arm here. That's the key in what you'll be responsible for. Our objective was basic functions.